I want to introduce our first speaker, Mr. Vijay Anand, Senior Vice President, Global Development Center of Intuit. Welcome, Vijay. Yeah, thank you, Hudi. Good to see you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vijay Anand, and I head Intuit's global engineering teams spread around the world. Today, what I want to talk about is uh, a trends that we see in cybersecurity. But before that, I wanted to give you some context. I'm not able to see all of you, but how many of you have heard about Intuit here? I see many hands go up. Excellent. Did you know that we have a center here in Israel, an R&D center in Israel? For those of you that, uh, okay, excellent. So f you may know that we've had an enduring mission as a company. And into it, we want to power prosperity around the world. You know, we are a company that have been in existence over three decades. You know, we began with our journey with Quicken. And this company is all about, you know, solving problems, solving unsolved problems that our customers face. And we use a methodology of customer-driven innovation and design for delight, a technique about how we can iteratively identify great solutions for the biggest problems that our customers face. Before I talk about the security trends, I wanted to give you some context. I'm not a security professional. I'm a practicing engineer, and I lead a third of Intuit's global engineering teams and I wanted to talk about the context, you know, of why is security so important. It is so important for our customers. We serve over 50 million customers around the world. These are the world's small businesses, the self-employed, and the consumers that manage their money. It's so important for them to make sure that they're on top of the money, they're able to make the right decisions so that they can make money and save money. And an issue, you know, a security issue, for example, is a matter of life and death for them. And this is why we take this so, so carefully. We have a team, by the way, in Intuit in Israel. We're here for the amazing talent that we have. We built a growing development center. We work very closely with the startup ecosystem in this country, and we want to innovate. What is our journey? You know, we began in the world desktop. You know, we began in the world of DAWs and Windows, and we evolved, you know, as we are one of the few companies that has actually evolved as the technology trends evolved, we reimagined ourselves for each one of those ages, you know, from the desktop world into the online world, into the smartphone and mobile world, into the cloud world, and into the future. Today, we have our focus on being an AI-driven expert platform. You know, a platform that brings people together, equips them with technology so that our experts are able to help our customers in the right way with all the tools that they need to make sure that they make the best financial decisions. One of the things that's been the hallmark from day one, and the reason why we've been successful in serving our customers, is the high bar we set in protecting our customers' data. You know, we've earned the trust of our customers by making, sure, by making sure that their data is safe. We declared many, many years ago a set of principles, you know, that has become the benchmark in the industry. A set of principles we call the data stewardship principles. These principles declare very clearly what our responsibility is in safeguarding our customers' data. What are the ways in which we use the data for the customer's benefit, and what are the things that we will not do with the data? And this level of transparency exhibited through every one of our customer offerings is actually the reason why we're the trusted safeguarders of the most important data our customers care about. The financial data, the bank, the accounts, the tax information. You know, and uh, for small businesses, it's it, all their finances. So when we talk about this, you know, we made sure that we focus on the most important problem. Over half of small businesses in the U.S. and in many cases around the world 
go out of business in their first year. There are numerous cases of small businesses that have been unable to deal with fraud situations that have essentially put them out of business. There have been numerous cases of people not being able to manage their financial situations effectively enough that they are unable to manage their life well. Financial security is a major challenge. And what we're actually trying to solve with our mission is how to actually help people not only get on top of this, but also power their prosperity. If you think about the technology evolution that I talked about, you know, our key offerings, you know, TurboTax, you may know, or QuickBooks, or Mint, these are offerings that were largely within our data centers. We made a declaration many years ago, that we want to move all in into the cloud, into the public cloud. We made that decision primarily because of all the advantages that the public cloud offered. You know, the ability for us to be more agile in serving the customer's needs, to be able to innovate more rapidly, to be able to provide the most important features that customers care about, and that's about availability, that's about resiliency, it's about security, and it is about making sure that we deliver all the quality that they need because that's the most important feature they care about. So as part of this transition, what we had to do is work with our cloud partner. You know, we chose AWS as a platform, and we had to work with them very early. We were one of the earliest companies on the financial domain to get it, declare that we are all in in the public cloud. And that partnership has actually helped us you know, focus on what are the gaps that we need to fill in terms of technology, in terms of the security capabilities we need to make sure that we can safeguard our customers' data and be true to our data stewardship principles. What we realized in this journey is, you know, the transition to the cloud has its challenges. We need to be able to address some of these challenges. You know, for example, you know, we knew that our data needs to remain encrypted at all times, and we wanted to make sure that we have the effective services needed to safeguard the data. But a lot of the technologies that were needed around key management, around secrets management, came later. And so we realized that as part of this, we need to address some of these gaps ourselves while we work with our cloud partners so that we can actually solve them in the right way. We did a broad search. You know, I want to talk about a specific example that we solved by coming here to Israel a few years ago. We wanted to make sure that we have the technology around encryption and, and essentially key management. And we came to Israel to talk to the startup ecosystem. We talked to over 100 startups. And we identified a company, a small team called Porticor, that we acquired. What Porticor solved is essentially providing us with a key management capability. This is an acquisition that we made, but that journey, that was just the beginning of the journey. What we had to do is now help this team drive that transformation that we need so that we can accelerate our journey into the public cloud. This you know, the lessons that we had from this journey could be instructive, you know, for companies, for startups out there that have been acquired and are trying to make that broad impact in a large enterprise. What Portico provided is essentially, you know, a capability, an effective library around key management. But what we really needed at Intuit with the offerings, you know, with the millions of customers that are using our cloud-based offerings is an enterprise-grade service that is hosted. So what the team had to do first is make sure that they fulfill that need. You know, build a capable service that the entire company can use. The second one was to make sure that, you know, they work with the product teams, you know, the key stakeholders, whether it be TurboTax or Mint. I mean, these are large offerings, very complex, and these teams are distant. You know, they're dispersed around the world. And so it was important to first take the same customer approach that we're so known for and apply this to the internal teams and have this team essentially have the mindset of saying, how do we actually delight 
the internal customers that are ado adopting our service. Make sure that they gather the requirements and design a standard capability, a standard service offering that would suit the needs for today and for the future. And that's essentially what they did. And then it's about making sure that the adoption is driven. The adoption where they make these adoptees successful and use that as the stepping stone to make sure that there's wide adoption across the enterprise. This has been a huge success story. You know, we hear about a lot of startups that the acquisitions then don't pan out the way it is. This is a great example for us of a small team right here that's actually influenced a transformation across the entire company. <clears throat> Today they have over 1,200 um, internal customers that are super happy. To a point where, you know, one of the things that uh, they realized was with key management, it's important to manage blast radius. You know, we can't have a few keys manage our entire massive data set, you know, for each one of our offerings. So what they designed was essentially a hybrid hierarchical scheme of derived keys that allow you to have a few keys that end up then, you know, managing the large number of keys with which we encrypt the data to minimize blast radius. This is the IDPS service that the team built out of the Porticore technology that today powers all our offerings and we're all in AWS. You know, as part of this, we actually talked about this, you know, with the team and said, as we look at the future, what are the trends that we see? What are the trends as we go to an AI-driven expert platform at Intuit that we need to get on top of? And I wanted to share this because we're very interested in partnering with the Israeli tech ecosystem, with the cyber ecosystem to see who could we partner with to get on top of these trends. The first one is what we call demonstrable compliance. You know, compliance to us, you know, we're essentially ultimately a compliance technology company. We comply with accounting standards, we comply with tax standards, we comply with a number of standards that are required for us to operate in all the geographies we live in. Today, you know, with the rapid evolution of compliance, this has become very important to make sure that we can provably be compliant in many, many dimensions. The second one I want to talk about is the security of the ecosystem. So it's, let's dive into the first one. <laughs> you know, we go from the realm of, you know, what we have done in the past, which is compliance to standards. You know, for example, our privacy regulations with a paper-driven process and a thorough audit that happens on a regular basis. The challenge with that is, you know, in a public cloud world, technology, the computer environments evolve very rapidly. We adopt new standards every day. Teams are very agile. And we also have a situation where the standards, whether it be GDPR and the emerging CCPA and other regulations are evolving so rapidly that the paper-driven waterfallish method of compliance is just not adequate. You know, what we really need is compliance from the ground up, a method of how this can be API-driven, where this can be so the truth, you know, that actually is at the source, and we're able to continuously verify compliance. This is technology that's going to be increasingly important for us to embed in all our offerings as we deal with, you know, all the regulations that are coming through. So we'd love to see, you know, what is the state of the art here and who could we partner with. The second that's important is around the security of the ecosystem. I just heard a few talks about how important it is for us to work as a community to make sure that, you know, we safeguard all of us. You know, gone are the days when we can actually work independently to secure our enterprises. You know, we have identity information that's now shared. We work with third parties today, you know, whether it be the financial institutions and others with which we share data. And so it's e very important for us to have technology-driven standards by which we can actually share information. There's work underway, for example, where our security teams are working within the IETF to propose ways for us to be able to notify uh, each other. So these are trends that we're looking to partner, you know, specifically with the ecosystem here, you know, with the startups and other firms that are able to solve these problems to see how we can work together to delight 
the millions of customers that we solve. I want to thank you all for having us at Cyber Week, and we're looking forward to all the conversations. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. It's, uh, okay. it's great inspiration to, Thank you. to see uh, an Israeli startup acquisition becoming a core technology of an organization, and hopefully you'll find more and expand your uh, presence here. And if there's anyone in the audience who still who is with an international cyber company that still doesn't have a design center in Israel, well, you should. <laughs> so take it into account. Absolutely. Thank you very much. You. <laughs> okay. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Anath Krishnan, uh, Executive Vice President and Chief Technology Officer of Tata Consulting Consultancy Services. Uh, Anath, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, pleasure to be here back in, uh, in Cyber Week again. I was here three years ago. and. Uh, I uh, was very pleased with the progress that we have made uh, in those three years. So what I'm going to talk about is to give you a view from my world, which is uh, the world of the enterprise, but not one enterprise, but thousands of enterprises that my organization, TCS, supports from a technology and an operations perspective globally. So in the next uh, 10 minutes or so, I'll give you a, a little bit of a, a view looking backwards, uh, not quite the Maginot line, but uh, a version of it, uh, and tell you what we are observing from our perspective in the world of business looking uh, uh, into the future, and then some actions and specific examples of what those could mean to this community at Cyber Week. All right, so if I take a look back at the last 50 years or so, uh, the way to read this chart is that when the world of information technology started becoming significant in businesses uh, in the 19, perhaps the 1950s, but let's start with the 1960s and 70s, um, there's a line which runs across the middle of this chart. So information technology was confined to the bottom half of the diagram. If you notice the 70s and the 80s, there's nothing to the top of the line. Right? Uh, those of you who are from that era would remember that many uh, computing systems, notably IBM systems, had the notion of a line which was drawn at 16 bits of addressable memory. Um, this, this diagram was inspired by that line. So we in computing, we're worried about things which happened inside our boundaries. So that's where the Maginot line, I guess, came from. Because if we secured the data center, if we secured the computing systems, life was good. But from about the 1980s, the world above the line became more and more significant. So if we fast forward now to the decade of the, of the, the, the 2010s, which is now getting way into the 2020s shortly, the number of things that IT professionals inside large enterprises have to worry about is as much below the line as it is above the line. There are many things that we do which will impact our customers, our customers, customers, and the public at large. You heard Intuit talk about 50 million customers that they support on the cloud. Uh, that is an example of something which was previously on a desktop and impacted one user at the most in terms of a security uh, issue, could now uh, impact the whole organization multiplied both inside and outside the organization. So that's the first important takeaway. Enterprises are now concerned not just about what happens inside, and that has grown in scale and complexity substantially, but equally substantially what happens outside their organizations because organization boundaries are now much, much wider. That's point number one. Point number two, the world of technology is very complex. These are the 100 things that I, as chief technology officer of a $21 billion company, have to worry about. These are not isolated in themselves. That's why I've tried to represent them as a periodic table. Just like in chemistry, every single element is interesting in itself, but the magic of chemistry happens when things start combining. Exactly the same way, if you've got really good eyes, one of the columns 
in the middle is called cybersecurity. It's colored light green. That is not to be viewed as an independent, non-interacting technology with the other 97 technologies which you see on this chart. This chart doesn't end with just that concept. There are the, the boxes, the elements, if you will, which are technologies in themselves, are colored differently. The ones which are deep orange are things that have entered mass proliferation. Things like artificial intelligence, personalization, things that you see on the top right of the diagram. You notice that cybersecurity in the middle is a, is a delicate light green. We are worried about it. We are perhaps a few hundred people, perhaps a few thousand. It's not at the scale that billions of people, which is what the deep orange is about, worry about every single day. So that's the second one. You have to weigh these technology options in terms of where are the consumers of technology at and how does one piggyback on that particular technology. So you don't just form compounds randomly, you try to form compounds with mass adoption technologies. The third and most important message is the bottom, where you would expect to find the rare earths. These are societal trends that you have to start paying attention to. And in the societal trends, again on the bottom right, you would see two deep orange boxes, privacy and cyber terrorism. These have entered the national, international and global consciousness. People are worried about both of these. Therefore, when you look at a technology like cyber, don't look at it in isolation, combine it, look at mass adoption, look at societal trends. From the world of business, today's cybersecurity was designed around business 3.0. 1.0 and 2.0 were the era of steam and the era of industrialization. 3.0 was the age of computing. 4.0, the world that we live in, enterprises, my customers, are not just worried about what they can do inside the enterprise. Of course, they leverage all the nice technologies, intelligence, agility, automation, cloud. And those are necessary for success. But the business models of organizations themselves, whether you're a bank, whether you're an airline, whether you're a manufacturer, a retailer, a health company, a pharmaceutical company, you are now worried about delivering experience. You are worried about creating ecosystems. You're worried about creating exponential value. And notice that you're very worried about embracing risk. The new enterprises, the new Fortune 100 companies of the 2020s are going to be driven by this kind of mindset. Because this decade that we live in, if you look at the, the, the top performing companies uh, in terms of market value and success, they are adopting these business 4.0 behaviors. And many organizations will be adopting these as we go forward. So that's where the puck is going to be. Don't try to protect a business 3.0 enterprise. That's the past. The future is going to be a 4.0 enterprise with these attributes. From a TCS perspective, we ourselves are a large organization. Uh, and, and we have the same or similar concerns that many other organizations have. But we are in a unique position because we work with the world's best companies whether it's in banking or insurance or telecoms or retail, all the industries that you see, that is what gives us the perspective to say what is going on in the world of the enterprise today and where is the puck going to be? The bad news is that the world of the enterprise today in general is perhaps five years behind where it should be. If you look at the concerns that are there on the left and some of the examples on the right side of this diagram, they seem pretty mundane based on the kind of stuff that you are hearing about in Cyber Week. Cyber Week, the university ecosystem, the Israel startup ecosystem, the world's best security professionals who are gathered here, we are talking about all this perhaps five years ago, ten years ago. The world of the enterprise in a bank, airline, et cetera, et cetera, is still catching up. It's not that it's not, not important to catch up and, and not important to do all these things, but it's equally 
equally worrying that the world of the enterprise is still where it is. So from a TCS research perspective, what are we doing? My, one of my, my responsibilities is actually to drive research in cybersecurity uh, and many other areas, of course. From our perspective, if I look at the, the, the current, that's what I showed you in the previous chart, it is about at least becoming proactive. It is the responsibility of the IT department. And the business sees security as at least an important enabler of the business. But a business 4.0 enterprise is going to worry about those four <clears throat> pillars on the right side, about making security not just something which is nice to have, but it's a differentiator. And that is what is driving our research agenda. You see five topics here, and if you're a security researcher, uh, please do come and talk to us. If you're working in any of these areas, you know, AI and ML, as I said, is a red hot area. We're investing significantly in securing AI and ML in large scale enterprises. All the way to on the right, securing the carbon layer, us, the human beings. Earlier sessions today talked about the importance of humanity in the security ecosystem. Don't forget that. Lastly, what are we doing in Israel? As I said earlier, I was. I'm here with my team. We've been here uh, engaged with Israel and the Israeli ecosystem, Tel Aviv University in particular, for the last several years. Extremely happy with what we are doing. TCS has a significant business in Israel as well. And we are committed to engaging with both the academic and the security, cybersecurity ecosystem here, whether you're a startup or a large company. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>